Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. All through his history, man has constantly striven to push back the frontiers of knowledge, to discover what lies behind the veil which separates knowledge from ignorance. In my own lifetime, I've seen things come to pass that would be unbelievable to my parents and to my grandparents. Travel through the air, the ability to speak to a friend halfway around the world. Well, if these wonders have occurred in so short a time, just think of what our children and grandchildren will be able to know and understand. Happenings that to us defy explanation will be commonplace and ordinary to them. But whether we understand it or not, the event that we depict in tonight's story was very real. It started with a cry for help, a plea to Almighty God, and following that, to a mortal. To a man referred to by the peasants of a tiny Italian village as Il Dottore. Mi preghiamo, non ho più di questo. Oh, Madonna, non ti credi, Gesù. Oh, invece questa bambina è la nostra vita. Non abbiamo altro al mondo. Abbiamo tante di quelle preghiere. Faccia che il dottore venga in tempo. Madonna, non ti credi, Gesù. Sì, cara, ti passerà. La mamma è qui con te, amore. No, no, cara, no. La mamma tu è con te. Signora, how long has she been like this? All day, off and on. Has she eaten? No, she won't take her food. Nothing, nothing. Ah! Oh, mio Dio. Ma non giochi. Il dottore, il dottore. Tu te quiero ver. She's worse. But the truck is broken down and oh. it is two miles to the doctor. You want your sister to die? Do you not have two good legs? Do with a father, maestro! There. Now take two tonight when you go to bed and two in the morning when you get up. Understand? Wait three days, and if you don't feel better, come and see me. Ah, that's my son. He is here. Yes, Signor Angelo is here, Doctor. Signor Angelo. Oh! How's my Marie? Oh, fine, fine. Ooh. Here, let me help you. Oh. Angelo, my son, my son. Ah, welcome home. And how glad I am to be here, Father. What delayed you? Was your train late? No. Giuseppe had trouble with the car. This is the second time this week he's broken down, Doctor. It's too old. Giuseppe, take those things upstairs. Don't stand here in the draft, Doctor. Take him inside by the fire. I go get something to warm him up. Ah, my son, it is good to see you home again. You're looking well. But it is a long time, over a year. I know. And I had a terrible job getting away from the hospital, even now. So? Too many patients already? Oh, it's not so much that, Father. They are short-handed. They lost two surgeons last month, and... Well, you know how it is. Ah, uh, who should know better than I? How about you? Oh, go along from day to day, nothing much happening, same as usual. No, I mean your health. You look tired. <sighs> no one gets any younger. Do you still permit them to bother you as much as ever? Bother me? Oh, I know these peasants. 
Every time they stub a toe, they yell for the doctor, like children. Only worse, in my opinion. There's some excuse for children. Ah, they are like children. They frighten so easily. But the trouble is, one never knows how serious it may be. A stomachache can be unripe apples or an appendix. A little temperature, a simple cold, or, or maybe the beginning of a serious fever. But a doctor is rewarded by... I know the arguments. But seriously, Father, you look far too tired for my liking. You are absolutely right, Signor Angelo. Some days he's running from morning until night, and it's no good my talking to him. Maybe you can make him see some sense. Or better still, maybe you can stay here and be the doctor. Well, I, I don't know about that. <sighs> I'm going to the Venturellis. I better hurry. You see? Always running, always running. You have uh, to go out? Oh, it is not very far. But on a night like this, can't I go for you? No, it is for the poor old grandmother, but nothing can be done for her. Well, in that case, can't you miss just once? Listen to that wind, there's a storm blowing up. Oh, the poor soul counts on seeing me every evening. If I miss just once, she would have a bad night. She's not too many left. Well, here's to the future. And here's to that long rest that I'm going to see to it that you have. Ah, and how are you going to manage that? Come back here and take my place? And bury myself here in this... I'm sorry, Father, I... I didn't mean that. Oh, you're quite right, my son. This is no place for a rising young surgeon. <laughs> well, in the big hospitals, there's much more opportunity. Up-to-date equipment and you know. Yes, we have none of that here. But there is one thing here that is just the same. What is that? The patients. Whether it is in a big city hospital or a peasant's cottage, the patients are just the same. All a little helpless, a little frightened. <laughs> well, I must go. I wish you didn't have to leave. Tell you the truth, I wish I didn't too. <laughs> Giuseppe! Yes, Doctor? Time to get started. I'm ready, Doctor. Yeah, well, I think I have everything here. Though the good God knows that all the equipment in the finest hospitals in the world could not help that poor old woman now. All I can do is to give her a little friendship, a little comfort. Angelo, it is amazing what power those things have. Sometimes I think they do more good than all my pills. <laughs> I brought you a present. Huh? A new bag. A fitted one with everything in it. A fitted? But I warn you, you're not going to need it for long. How is that? Because you're going to retire. And you're going to come and live with me in the city. Retire? Leave these people? But, but Angelo, they are my children. I, I could not do that. Why, no, no. I could never do that. Now you get back before the storm gets any worse. Don't let them keep you talking. <laughs> I'll be back before you know it. Ooh. Ah, what a night! Oh. How do you think the doctor looks, Signor Angelo? He's aging far too quickly for my liking, Maria. I'm worried about him. Yes. He is tired, and he gets more tired every day. But now that you are here, it's going to be easier for him. I'm not going to stay, Maria. Oh? You've got to help me. I want him to come and live with me in the city. You're the only person that can help me persuade him. Take him away from here? You can't do that. Why not? I, uh, they wouldn't let you. Who wouldn't? The people here, they can't do without him. Is there so much sickness here, then? Oh, it... It isn't only sickness, it's, it's everything. Anything that happens, it's ask the doctor. And he never refuses. Oh, mamma mia, who can it be? I'm coming, I'm coming. Are you trying to knock the door down? Tony Bianchi, what do you want? The doctor, he must come at once. The doctor is not here. But he must come. But how can he come if he's not here, stupido? What's the matter, Tony? Buenos Aires, Signor Angelo. It is little Francesca. She is very sick. And Mama has seen it. 
She will die. But... All right, I'll come, Tony. There's a bag with a suitcase. It's a black one. Will you get it for me? Yeah. But it is the doctor. Mama said... I am a doctor, too, Tony. He is very sick. Where is that pony? I should have gone myself. Why doesn't he come? The doctor will come. He always does. Grudge, grudge. Be careful, Maria. The daughter's hands is hurt. Now what have you done with yourself? He's scalded with boiling water. Let me see. It is nothing. Ay, that is bad. Fix it easily. Oh, yeah. Let me do this for you. be able to use this hand for a while. Giuseppe, go get the doctor's slippers. Come and sit down, doctor. Where's Angelo? Upstairs? No, he went out. Ah. Tony Bianchi came for you. Uh, Francesca, the little girl, she's sick. And Angelo went? Yes. Did Tony say what was wrong with the child? No. He just said that she's very sick. But you know how they are. They are always very sick. Shall I put the car away, doctor? No, Giuseppe. Maybe I'd better go myself and see. What? You go out again on a night like this and, and with that hand scalded? Oh. Did Tony come in the truck? No, I don't think so. You mean they walked in a storm like this? They are both young. Now you stay right there, no nonsense. Uh, I hope he'll be all right. Of course he'll be all right. He's a doctor, isn't he? I know, but... You worry too much. Now you stay right there and rest and I'll go finish the dinner. Giuseppe, take the car and go down the road. You may be able to pick them up before they get there. Yes, Doctor. In any case, wait and bring Angelo back. And va bene. Signor Angelo! Well, where is the doctor? I'm a doctor. Where's the child? What have you done? I told you to bring the doctor. What have you done? I couldn't help it, Mama. The doctor wasn't there. My father was out on another call. Tony said it was urgent, so I came instead. But, but we need a doctor. I am a doctor, Signor Bianchi. I can do everything that is needed. Now, where's the child? In there? No. Dottore! Dottore, no! Non la tocchi, dottore! Non la tocchi! My baby! My baby! Just a minute, let me look at her. No, no, you must not touch her. I'm not going to harm her.
the child is very sick. Oh. I'll have to be quick if I'm to save her. I'll have to boil these. Put some water on the fire. You heard me? I have to boil these instruments. What are you going to do with them? I'm going to operate on the little girl. No. No, Senor Angelo. You will not touch. We will wait for the doctor. Don't you understand how sick your child is? You will not touch her. Do as I say. Put that water on the fire. Of all the stubborn fools. We will wait. Giuseppe, what are you doing here? Where's my father? He's sending me with the car to take you back. Go back and get him. Tell him these fools won't let me operate and it's a matter of life and death. Now hurry! Now will you put that water on? We wait for the doctor. There won't be time then. This way they'll be ready for him. You're too stubborn to let me help you. Pray. Pray that my father gets here in time. you've come. Now, will you go? I'll have to be quick. It's diphtheria. Giuseppe, I'll clean up here. It'll take some time. She's gonna be all right. See to it that the child has absolute quiet. You understand? Has Giuseppe come back with the car yet? No, Signor Angelo. Are you not going to wait for the car? No, it's probably broken down again. I'll be back in a few hours to see how the child is. My father's too tired to come. He's completely worn out. I'll have to come alone. You understand? Senor Angelo. Yes? Many thanks. Doctor?
What's the matter this time, Giuseppe? It's the car there, eh, Mr. Angelo. I can't start it. Where's my father? At the house. Here you are at last. I saved dinner for you. I hope it hasn't spoiled. How's Francesca? She's fine. His father all right? Yes, he's inside, but, but where's Giuseppe? Are you all right, Father? Father? Hmm? Huh? Oh, it is you, Angelo. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm all right. Thank goodness. I was worried about you getting through that storm. Well, we, we worried about you, too. Didn't we, Maria? What happened to your hand? He scalded it at the Venturellis. Oh, it is nothing. How is it with the little Francesca? Oh, she'll be all right. I'm going back to see her later on. What is the matter with these peasants? A child choking to death for lack of a simple tracheotomy, and they wouldn't let me touch her. Thank goodness you showed up when you did. Another minute, and I'd have had to knock out that crazy Bianchi to save his own child's life. And when I saw the car was broken down and you had to come back through that storm, I... What's the matter? Didn't Giuseppe bring you back? No. He never returned to the Bianchi's after he took you home. I passed him a mile up the road. Why? What's wrong? The doctor hasn't been out. Not been out? You were with me, Father. What's the joke? What is this? I have been asleep here all the time. Ask Maria. But we all saw you. Mr. Angelo, their car. How come you get the doctor as you told me? I hope everything was all right. A man may well doubt what he sees with his own eyes, but when reliable witnesses give confirmation, it's difficult to disbelieve. The elder Dr. Maccabienti, however, didn't doubt this strange occurrence. He believed in the truth of the statement that he had made to his son. In the treatment of a patient, faith is often more important than medicine. It was enough for the good doctor that whatever the reason, one of his people had been saved. He didn't question, he accepted. Dr. Angelo did not as yet have this understanding. It puzzled and annoyed him to be unable to arrive at a scientific explanation. Well, he never did. But his acceptance by the peasants as the young doctore did bring him around to his father's way of thinking. The glamour of big city medicine gradually lost its power and he stayed with his father to help what soon became their people. Actual happenings as this one on which tonight's story is based occur much too frequently to be passed off lightly. Time and again in my research, I've encountered reports of cases of this kind which have been thoroughly documented by reliable authorities. The explanation? There is none. At least, not one yet known to us. Please join me again for another journey into the world of the unexplainable that lies behind the veil. Good night.